Good morning, everyone. Let us stand as we go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we breathe in, we breathe in life from you. You're our hope, our stay, our rock. You're our all in all. And this world just doesn't have anything to offer us any longer. And we just thank you, Lord, that uh, our hope is in you. And we just thank you, Lord, that we can gather here in your name and give you praise. Hear our praise, Lord, as we offer it up to you from our hearts, from our soul, from our very being, <coughs> as we worship you, dear God. And we praise your name. Speak to us today as you do every week through your word. And we give you praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Amen. He's good all the time. I just want to say I, I appreciate everybody that came out and, and helped us in the garden yesterday. And I, I know a lot of people were working and, and couldn't make it. But fear not. There's going to be plenty more work left to do. Okay? So, <clears throat> we have a, a pretty much over, more than double the size of our, our garden out here in our Blessed Garden. And, uh, and we just, we're going to need some help. So, But praise the Lord. God is good. And I'm here to worship Him this morning. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
We can count on him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He has never let us down. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 
love is softly spoken My conscience is a reminder of forgiveness that I need. Amen. Who is this King of glory? Who offers it to me? Who is this King of angels? Oh, blessed Prince.
place to hide. For I am not a captain to the night. Where he's at, 
at home, Father, recovering. We pray that you would extend your hand of healing and touch him today. Father, just restore him and touch him right now. Father, we know that your word is true. And we ask it in faith, believing, based upon your word, touch Richard right now. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Yes. Today we're going to talk about the mystery and the awe and wonder of presence. I did a message on presence, the presence of God in October of last year. And I brought that, I made copies of that for you to put together with this one later this morning. I was kind of amazed when the Lord woke me up. I was actually partially asleep and partially awake. You've been that way before. And I found myself singing over the glory of his presence from our, our service that we had last Sunday. Amen. And uh, I just got up and began to work all week long. I don't know that I've ever put this much time in a message that I put in this one. I wrote a whole yellow page, whole yellow pad, just about on every page. Then I, re, I, then I finally brought it down to what we're going to provide for you today. But I spent a whole week on talking to God and looking at His Word and thinking about the, the awe and wonder. I thought we had a, quite a, spirit, a sweet spirit here last Sunday morning as we closed. I uh, just wanted to revisit this subject again. And I was amazed that I spent four or five days working and then I, I pulled the one I had done in October and it was, it doesn't even, it doesn't even match. I mean, it's the same subject, but it was totally different vein the Lord led me in. I was amazed by that because I had kind of somewhat forgot exactly what I covered, the one that I had done in October. The mystery of presence is, is something very, very intriguing. How many of you, like myself, have ever been alone in a space, in a room? You heard no one come in. You heard no footsteps. You saw no one. But immediately, you sense someone presence, even though you didn't hear them, even though you didn't see them. Sometimes people have described it, they felt like someone was watching them, but there was no one they saw around. The mystery of presence is, is pretty amazing. There's numerous times in my life that I sensed someone that I didn't hear, but I turned around and there they were. But I sensed them before I actually saw them. There's a mystery to presence. And to we as individuals created the image of God, we have a presence. And of course God has a presence that is so mysterious in so many ways. God reveals his presence in so many different ways. His illuminating presence, his indwelling presence, he drills all of us. By his spirit, but God's inspirational presence, where special places and special times and special moments, he comes and reveals his manifest presence in very, very special ways. And I think we see this a lot during the times of revivals where God comes. It seems like I think sometimes we go through seasons where we like gardens need rain. And we, we were like a garden that needs a fresh rain of God's Spirit. 
And if we don't get it, we're going to dry up and die. We need it so desperately. Today, we need present-driven churches. We need churches that are driven by the presence of God. We need lives that are driven by the presence of God. When you wake up in the morning, your life from that day forward till you lay your head down again, you're living your life with a sense of God's presence in your life. It's, there's an awe and wonder to it. There's a mystery to it as well. The presence. We experience God by experiencing His presence. I've been to meetings, Catherine Kuhlman, Billy Graham, personally, in person, I've been to meetings like that. And I've seen a lot of things and I have experienced the manifest presence of God. And I, it's, it's just something so amazing and I've been the times when I did not feel God's presence. But the Bible declares to us that God, one of his divine attributes is omnipresence. He, he fills all spaces everywhere. God fills the earth with his presence. But the manifest presence may be a little different than the omnipresence of God. Because he reveals himself in different ways when he, with, of his presence. And I asked the question, what would cause 50,000 people to leave their homes from different parts of the country and some from overseas to make their way to a small university in Kentucky? I would do that. What could be that motivating that would cause people to lay aside what they were doing, maybe take off from their jobs and drive to a place they've never been before, to a small town, to a small university. What would cause students at the Asbury University to go without meals and to go without sleep? You gotta ask yourself those kind of questions. What, what could cause that? What could be that motivating and that powerful? What would be the reason for seemingly endless worship taking place 24-7 days on end? Why would people sit for hours and hours at a time going without food and sleep? Got to ask yourself those kind of questions. What would motivate over four million people, some say five million, from all over the world to travel to Pensacola, Florida and stand in line for eight hours in the heat and humidity just to go to a service for several hours? Can you ask yourself a question? Why would people do such a thing as that? I did that. Joe and I did that. We drove to Pensacola during the Brownsville Revival. We stood out in the heat. We were told that ministers, they would put them in a special section. Maybe we heard that. But we stood out in the heat, in the humidity for hours. And it was amazing, the people around you, how worshipful they were, how hungry they were, how thirsty they were for the things of God. It wasn't, it wasn't people just, just curious. It was more than that. It was people who were hungry for the presence of God. And they heard that there was a, a, a outpouring of God's, the manifest presence of God was showing up at this revival on a nightly basis and they wanted to come. 
We had a revival in Tennessee at our church, small church like this. And we went on eight weeks. We had two services a day. And a Baptist preacher who had just been baptized in the Holy Spirit preaching for me. We wind up having to put a tent outside the building to accommodate the crowds. Eight weeks, two services a day. People didn't clean their houses like they normally would. People didn't eat like they normally ate. They were hungry for the presence of God. Got to ask questions like that. What is so motivating? It's all about the awe and wonder and mystery of the presence of God. Presence that is invisible. Yet it impacts your senses and it impacts the way you feel. Invisible, but not intangible. This is the answer to all those questions that we started with. It's all about that awe and wonder. Thirsty and hungry souls will go wherever there's an outpouring or a manifestation of the presence of God to experience God in a fresh new anointing. People will do a lot and go a long distance to go to a place where they feel or heard of that God is sh there showing himself in a very special way in his presence. God's manifest presence is revealed in the book of Exodus and throughout all the scriptures. An intensive, intensive presence that underlines a principle that God desires to reveal himself to people. God is self-disclosing. God wants to reveal himself to people. He desires to do that. Of course, we know the greatest example of that is the incarnation when God became a man and walked among us to reveal himself to us. He does it in various ways and he does it because he wants to reveal himself. How many are glad that you're one of his today? In Exodus, we have a vivid account of God's divine appearance and presence with Moses. And the Lord said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. It's interesting how God is describing himself and we go back to Genesis that we were created in the image of God and he gives this image to Moses of a hand and a back very mysterious how he presents himself to Moses the theologian Henry says the rock in Horeb was typical of Christ, the rock, the rock of ages. How many knows he's the rock of ages? He's the rock of our salvation. He is the rock of refuge. Those who stand on this rock are safe and secure. How many are glad you're standing on the rock today? This Imagery foreshadows the appearance of God in Christ. And in Him and through His atonement, 
we now can see God's face and not die. Come on. Think about it. John 14, 9, Jesus says, Have I been all this time among you without you really knowing me? Have I been all this time with you and you really don't know me? He who has looked on me, Jesus said, has looked on the Father God. So we are them from, from the Exodus experience with Moses, now we have God, we're able to see His face now. Reynolds, the theologian, says, there is no right understanding of Jesus Christ until the Father is actually seen in Him. I like that. There is no right understanding of Jesus Christ until Father God is actually seen in Him. And the Bible says, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. God is revealing his character and nature during this, this encounter. God's revealing his character and nature. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord God is merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. How many believe that the Lord God is merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth? He was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Neither did he eat bread nor drink water. Come on. Does that explain why Asbury students could do without food, could do without sleep because of being with God in His presence. Think about it. The appearance and brightness of God's presence was reflected in Moses himself. The skin of his face shone so bright his face had to be covered before he stood before the people. Now I've heard of makeovers and makeup, but man, this is something. That's right. The glory of God was on Moses' face to the extent where they had to cover it because people couldn't look on it. The brightness, the radiance, that shone from his face. But this radiance from Moses anticipates the climax in Christ because Hebrews 1.3 says, declares Christ is the radiance and the brightness of the glory of God. Come on. Christ is the radiance and the brightness of the glory of God. And here this was a prefix to what was coming. Believers who have communion with Christ are transformed as so as to reflect the glory and the presence of Christ. And Paul makes that clear in 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we all with unveiled face Beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into that same image from one degree of glory to one degree of glory, glory to glory to glory. Come on. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Dr. Richard Dobbins was a man that John and I was very familiar with. We heard him speak numerous times in different places. He started a counseling center in Akron, Ohio called Emerge Ministries, which is a very large ministry. 
they ministered to hundreds of thousands, and that's not an exaggeration. They ministered to a lot of ministers and missionaries in counseling, and they, they were a, an incredible staff. A lot of those staff that ran positions there at Emerge Ministries came and stayed at our retreat place over the years that we had in Southern, in Southern Pines. We met a lot of them, got to know a lot of them from Emerge Ministries. But Dr. Richard Dobbins is the one that started that ministry. Very far-reaching ministry. And one of the more interesting things, when we went to hear Dr. Dobbins speak, a spirit-filled, highly educated, but very much spirit-filled individual. Dr. Dobbins spoke on presence of humanity, of human beings, presence, created in the image of God. And Dr. Richard Dobbins says, every person has a presence about them. Uh, some people seem to have quite a presence, very mysterious, very hard to explain. Uh, to give an example, maybe, uh, in our lifetime, I think uh, Ronald Reagan was a man that had an incredible presence about him. I mean, I sure wish we had people today that was running our country that had the qualities that President Reagan had. We are sure we you talk about dumbing down. It's gotten very dumb and very down. The dumbing down of leadership in America. But Reagan was such such a presence that he had. And there's other people, entertainers, people that we have come to know that seem to have quite a presence. But we all have a presence. Dr. Dobbins wrote a book on it, Invisible Imprint. I'm trying to get a copy before today, but we just couldn't quite get one from Amazon quick enough. It can attract people to you. I said, your presence can attract people to you. And it can repel people from you. Have you ever known people you wanted to run from? But you didn't know why. You didn't understand exactly why. When you saw them coming, you changed the other side of the sidewalk. Because you really didn't want to see them. Dr. Dobbins asked the question, what kind of presence emanates from you? Your presence is a most powerful resource, and it is true. But tying it into what Paul said, Paul says we're being transformed into an image, the image of Christ. Come on, people. We should have a good image. We should have a good presence about ourselves. We're being transformed into the same image, changed into a Christ likeness with the glory getting greater and greater by the Spirit of the Lord. Come on. Yes. I know some Christians, their presence speaks of baptism and pickle juice mostly. But, uh, and I don't totally know how to explain that. But man, anyway, I better leave it there. It's time to transition to Psalm 16. 1611, David declared, You made known to me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. One translation says abundant joy. At your right hand are pleasures of living with you forever. I love that rendition of that. At your right hand are prayers pleasures of living with you forever. 
forever. I'm here looking forward to that, of living in God's presence forever. Listen. David here proclaims God's plan for your life involves fullness of joy in his presence. Okay? David here proclaims God's plan for your life involves fullness of joy in his presence. Somebody say amen in this place. That's God's prescription for living. Come on. We're not supposed to be walking around like a bunch of sad sacks. We are to walk in the fullness of the joy of the Lord and the presence of God flowing and emanating from our lives. Come on. Yes. That's what David is proclaiming here. And, and I put in parentheses, God's presence and joy supersedes all circumstances. Circle the word all circumstances. God's presence and joy supersedes all circumstances of life. Come on. The path of life involves walking in his presence. We talk about in Galatians 5, 6, 16. Walking in the spirit. Abiding in Christ. John 15. The path of life involves walking in His presence. We walk in the Spirit. We abide in Christ. So that life flow from the branch comes into us. Oh, yes. Now, I sum it up this way. A life worth living, a path worth following, a life found in your presence. Now let's transition another time to the New Testament. Repent, you therefore be converted that your sins may be blotted out in order that, in order that times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Do you know that every one of these revivals, whether it was Brownsville, whether it was Asbury, that's going on to right now as we speak, you know one of the common denominator threads that go through all these great happenings? Repentance. They started in Asbury. The boy comes up to the altar and begins to repent. That's, that's what started the revival. I mean, what we understand. That he came forward and then boom. In the, in the Brownsville revival, they weren't preaching on uh, you need a car, every, every, every Christian needs a new Mercedes Benz or a new Cadillac. Or, they weren't preaching on, on some social gospel. They weren't preaching on God wants everybody to have a mansion. No, they weren't preaching on that. Every night, every night for almost six years, they preached on repentance. Amen. Amen. But they were enjoying the times of refreshing of the Spirit of God. Come on. It's, it's the thread. It's the thread that goes through all of that. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted. Blotted out. It's amazing. The ink they used back in the days of Christ didn't have acid in it as it does today. So if you, if you had a blot you wanted to get rid of it. All you needed was a damp cloth and, and it cleaned it right off. Today, because of the acid in the ink, you can't do that. You, you, you can't just wipe it off because it stays there. But in the time of Christ, there was no acid in the ink and you could just, with a damp cloth, you could just wipe it and it'd be clean. He's speaking of that here. Repent. Therefore, be converted that your sins may be blotted out in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Isaiah spoke of it as well, using the same term. Isaiah also speaks of times of refreshing, speaking of Israel's future restoration. 
but we also know that God sends times of refreshing to his people today. We should pray for a belief for a new season of revival and refreshing of the Spirit of God among us. Come on. Yes. Oh, man. We're like that garden that needs the water. And if we don't get it, we're going to die. Wow. A sad commentary is found in Genesis 3, 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. You would have thought they would have known enough about God by this time to how foolish it was to think they could hide among the trees from God, Creator God. And this seems to be a happening that was happening that God would come down and would walk with them and God would commune with them and God would uh, share his presence with them and they had that. But they traded it away. And I use a quote that I saw just the other day on an interview done by Chuck Smith who played the, the, the lead role, the real Chuck Smith was interviewed in the Jesus Revolution, but this real Chuck Smith gave a word when he was interviewed several years back. And I used it to apply it to this. Chuck Smith said, and I like this, never trade what you do know for what you don't know. Amen. They traded that sweet communion with God, that God would come and commune with them, and when Satan came to tempt them, to tempt them to take of the tree that was forbidden, so that they may be wise to good and evil, they traded the good of knowing God for that which they didn't know, and reached for the forbidden fruit. That Chuck Smith quote can be applied to a lot of different things. Don't never trade what you do know. Even how hard things are, no matter how difficult things are going, no matter what circumstance comes up in your life, never trade what you do know about the loving God for something that you don't know. Don't trade it away. Because it's a bad trade. It's always a bad trade. Never give up. Never trade what you know about God and His goodness for reaching for trying to find something else that you don't know. Bad trade. There's power in healing in the presence of God. Moses said, God, if your presence does not go with us, then we're not going. God, if your presence don't go with us, we're not going. We're not going. The refreshing, the power, the healing in the presence of God. The scripture says, humble yourself in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you. I thought last Sunday around the altar there was an unusual presence of God among us. For me, it was hard to leave. I woke up Tuesday morning, partially asleep, partially awake. Found myself singing. This was, this was unique for me. Oh, the glory of your presence. If we can become a god present filled church. I said, if we can become a god present filled church. Everything we need, everything we desire,
can be realized if we can become a God presence filled church. How many can make this their prayer today? Let's sing together over the glory before we take our communion today. Let's stand together.
This next song say, let the rain of your presence fall on me. Every day that I live, every breath that I breathe, everywhere that I go, let your presence flow upon me. Let the rain of your presence fall on me. Every day that I live, with every breath I breathe, let the rain of your presence fall on me.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
that illuminating presence of God showed us that we were sinners. That illuminating presence of God showed us that the word was true and made it real. And we found, we found a new life around the cross of Christ. We found that new life that Jesus died to give us. His broken body and his shed blood. Oh boy. Boy, boy. Mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And your children. Do you sense my presence with you today? Do you sense my sweet spirit as it walks among you? Do you sense my presence with you when you are home alone, when you are in the car? Do you sense my presence? Do you sense me just yearning and wanting to be loved by you? Do you sense my presence that has a deep abiding love for you? A love right now that you can't probably even comprehend. My love for you is deeper. It's greater. It's more powerful than anything you could ever know. And it is this great love for you that sent my son to die a brutal death on the cross. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. That you might have life with me yes, yes. forever that you can experience the joy in my presence, abundant life here and now, but abundant life in eternity, for we will be together forever. It is my presence that is the difference between life and death. It is my presence that is the difference between heaven and hell. It is my presence that gives you strength and encouragement, and it is my presence that gives you hope. It is my presence here among you that speaks to you today, not in a loud voice that comes to condemn, but with whispers of love, whispers of tenderness, whispers of mercy and grace, whispers that long to hold you to my chest, that long your, for your heart to beat with mine. And I just ask you to be still in my presence and to know that I am here that I will never leave you or forsake you, and that my love for you is eternal and everlasting. Let's, let's rejoice in the exhortation that we just received, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Who's ever been surprised by his presence? There's been a few times in my lifetime when all of a sudden I just was sort of surprised that he kind of snuck up on me. And he, there he was. I wasn't all that spiritual at the moment, but there he was. I mean, we needed his presence. He sort of surprised us and came and begin to manifest his presence to us. Wow. Dave, hey, I'd like to share something. Sure. Some of you may remember I'm not supposed to be here today. Uh, I had for the past month and a half, or no, two and a half months, been working towards a trip to Scotland, Glasgow, Scotland, for a training and stuff that starts tomorrow, and everything was in place. Uh, you know, my flight was booked. I was, everything was in place. The night before, the Lord asked me if he said no, would I accept it? Well, of course, in my arrogance, I said, sure, Lord. Well, he 
said no. At the last minute, he said no. And because I had been preparing for this and I bought things for this trip and everything, it was like I was going 100 miles an hour and ran into a brick wall. I was gutted. I was literally stunned. And I have to praise him and thank him, though, despite how horrific that was, he showed me things that were in me still that if you had asked me, I would have said no. They're not there. I wouldn't have a problem with that. There was jealousy. There was anger, deep, deep, sick to my stomach anger. There was um, envy. There was just all the things that I would have thought throughout time had been worked out for me. And it just is amazing. The Lord just gave the word through Terry about his love. His love through this has been absolutely amazing. It had, you know, I would, in my, in my arrogance and in my whatever, I would never, ever have thought that stuff was there. And it had to go. It has to be worked out. So, you know, I am, do I still wish I could have gone? Yes, absolutely. Am I submitted to his will? Yes. I don't know why he stopped it. I just know that he's got something absolutely wonderful beyond anything I can imagine. That he has a reason I did not get it. So I just want to praise the Lord and, you know, just the one key that you said, Dave, Pastor Dave, is the fact that repentance, yes. you know, repentance comes before revival and revival starts. Repentance and revival starts in this church. So, you know, I, I'm praising God that I was here this week. So what's going to happen in the future? Don't know. Just know that God is just magnificent. And I'm so excited. I think you're setting yourself up for some times of refreshing. Yes. 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 And I, I really should have known. If I had been paying attention, I would have known this was going to happen because from the very beginning, I said to God, in order for me to go, you're going to have to move in a mighty way. Okay? You're going to have to provide the money in a mighty way. Well, the money came in a way that really didn't have to have God's hand in it. I should have known at that point. But I wasn't. Again, this is what God wants. Obviously, this is what God wants. Chuck, you need to stay close to her because when that refreshing starts coming on her, if you're close enough, it may jump on you too. <laughs> and he's a wonderful man. He went through my ranting, my raving, my carrying on, and he just he just loved me and held me and let me cry and all the other stuff. So God has blessed me with him. So, so he I needs that overflow. Yes. 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 Anyone else? God's speaking this morning too. Uh, how many, how many are not going to be satisfied till your garden is flooded with the rain of His presence? Amen. Oh, Amen. Man. Oh man, it's not too late. God's still in the business of pouring out His presence. He's still in the business of exalting His children that they'll humble themselves before Him. He's still in doing. He's still doing that sort of thing. Yeah, and I just feel like that just in the last couple of months of what God has been giving me to preach, Joan has even said, this: you have preached some of the best messages in your entire ministry in the last couple of months. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe my time is short. I don't know what God's doing. But I, I've always asked Him to help me finish strong, Pastor David. And, and all that's desire you have as well. 
We all have that same desire. Those of us who've ministered for years. Listen. God's presence can solve a lot of problems. Amen. A lot of, a lot of healing can come. A lot of things can happen if we can just avail ourselves and just say, God, let it fall on me. I repent. I do whatever I need to do that I may receive your manifest presence. Not just the omnipresence. Not just the Spirit of God that's in every believer, but an outpouring of a fresh anointing of your presence upon me. Upon us. Oh. Can we say it just one more time? Oh, the presence. Oh, the glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, the glory. you rise above the circumstances. Oh, God. God, we're not going to be satisfied until you rain down and soak us with your presence and spirit. Oh, God. Let it be, God, let it be. Let it be. Thank you, Jesus.